A watershed is an area of land that drains all of its streams, rivers, groundwater, and precipitation to a common outlet, such as the outflow of a reservoir, the mouth of a bay, or any point along a stream. If you're standing on the landscape, you're standing in a watershed. This means that anything that spills on the landscape has a pretty good chance of ending up in a stream or water resource. You may have heard a teacher refer to water as the universal solvent. That's because water is capable of dissolving more substances than any other fluid. Because water is the universal solvent, it picks up pollutants during its travel down the watershed. That's what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you today using the Enviroscape watershed model. The watershed model has an agricultural operation, a residential area or neighborhood, an active construction site, a golf course, and a factory. All of these different land uses have different impacts on our environment. Best management practices or BMPs help to reduce those impacts. Common agricultural operations in Chester County farm mushrooms, crops for animal feed and food production, cows for dairy, steer for beef, and horses for leisure, racing, and farm work. Crop fields are often tilled by the farmer after harvest, which loosens the soil. Dairy farms frequently have heavy use areas where the cows are allowed to feed outside. They poop on the ground a lot, and if the ground is wet, they also loosen the soil with their hooves. Loosening the soil makes it much easier to get washed away. The process of soil getting washed away is called erosion. Sometimes farmers allow their cows to have unrestricted access to the stream, and since they aren't trained to eliminate waste in a particular location, they end up doing it wherever they happen to be standing. On a hot day, cows love standing in the stream to keep cool. That means they end up eliminating waste directly into the stream. Cows also poop in the barn, and that manure is cleaned up and eventually spread on fields to add nutrients, which crops need in order to grow. Some of the nutrients that manure and soil contain are nitrogen and phosphorus, which have a negative impact on water quality. For example, they can cause the enormous growth of aquatic plants and algae, which cause serious harm to the ecosystem. The invasion of excessive plants in a water body use up the dissolved oxygen in the water as they decompose and deprive the rest of the ecosystem of this chemical, which they need in order to survive. Manure and soil also contain bacteria, which can be harmful to wildlife and people. Here, this cocoa powder represents the loose sediment and manure. This Kool-Aid powder represents any pesticides, fertilizers, or other chemicals farmers need to apply to their fields in order to grow the food we eat. This water represents rainfall. Notice how at first the water is able to stay where it is. During a light rain event, water soaks into the ground and doesn't erode the soil. During a severe rain event, the ground can't soak up any more water and it starts flowing over the ground. We call this water runoff. It picks up speed when it travels over smoother surfaces and steep slopes, and also picks up anything the water can dissolve or carry in suspension. Some best management practices to help reduce some of these impacts are installing stream bank fencing to keep cows out of the stream. No-till farming allows farmers to plant into untilled ground, never even loosening the soil. Riparian buffers are vegetated areas between possible pollutant sources and the stream and contour farming keeps the farmer plowing across the hill slope rather than up and down, helping to prevent erosion. Farmers should use soil tests to indicate how much fertilizer or manure can be applied to their fields at a given time. Having an adequate volume of manure storage available can give them some flexibility and they can wait for a more appropriate time to spread the manure. The shape of the ground matters too. Notice how this berm prevents soil from entering the water body. As we look across the watershed, we see the impacts of other land uses. Here is a neighborhood. It might look pretty harmless, but water traveling over pavement and rooftops have no opportunity to get absorbed into the groundwater system and little opportunity to slow down because pavement is very smooth, unlike tall grass or rocky ground. We call things like pavement and rooftops impervious surfaces. Impervious means that it doesn't allow fluid to pass through it. Reducing impervious surfaces helps to decrease runoff. Some households have older vehicles with fluid leaks 
which spills slowly into the pavement. This chicken seasoning represents car fluid leaks or other household chemicals like soap and lawn fertilizer, which can impact water quality. When it rains, the water travels down the watershed, collecting whatever it comes in contact with. Proper disposal of chemicals, cleaning up after pets, and maintaining septic tanks are some ways that households can reduce their impacts on water quality. Storm drains are metal grates you see on roads and parking lots, which help prevent flooding. Water enters the storm drain and is sent through a pipe to a nearby channel or stream. If there are pollutants near a storm drain, they will quickly end up in the stream. Construction sites require some amount of excavation, which is moving soil to change the shape of the land. If proper best management practices, or BMPs, are not used, a great deal of soil can erode and end up in the stream. BMPs used on construction sites are vegetated strips, straw bales, and silt fencing to filter out the sediment and allow the filtered water to pass through slowly. When construction is complete, grass and other vegetation should be planted immediately to help hold the soil in place. Golf courses use fertilizer and herbicide to keep their grass looking perfect. Landscapers can use soil tests to know how much of each nutrient their landscape needs and only apply that much. They can also avoid applying these right before a severe rain event. Landscape professionals should always adhere to the instructions on the label of any pesticide they use. Parking lots often have trash and oil spill from vehicles. Vegetated stormwater basins and other green stormwater infrastructure can help filter out some of these pollutants. Trash cans help to prevent litter. Aside from the pollution coming from the storm drains, all of these examples of pollution are what's called non-point source pollution. Non-point source pollution doesn't result from discharge at a single location, but it results from general runoff, seepage, and drainage over the landscape after a rain event. We've discovered different ways of dealing with potential pollutants. Nutrients, toxic substances, bacteria, and soil aren't actually pollutants until they affect our environment. Although BMPs can't entirely eliminate all pollutants in the runoff, they can reduce pollution and they can contribute to a total pollution prevention system. Thank you for watching Chester County Conservation District's demonstration of the Enviroscape Watershed Model.